Okay, thank you. I think I was using hands free. So I was saying for the uh, for the people in the class, I'll first of all go through the module so that we can be able to see what we aim to achieve with the tracker capture by going through our learning objectives, the learner's guide, which will guide you later, and we'll finally be able to look at our summary. But just in passing, I think the most important thing for my session today is to be able to guide you and show you which will be our learning objective. But my hope is that at the end of this session, we will number one, be able to understand how we select a particular program. As you've been able to go through the learning site, you realize we have a number of areas where we can be able to work on those particular ones. The other thing you'll be able to see is we'll be able to take you through a layout of the tracker capture so that you can be able to look and see which are the feel of it. Once we're done with that, we'll be able to see how we can register an entity on that particular tracker instance. We will learn about the program stage details, demonstrate how to search for a tracker entity in the instance, how we can be able to create a relationship, especially in line with what the different programs will be able to work. And lastly, understand how to skip logic can be used in the tracker program. So if these objectives are quite clear for you, these are the things that you'll be able to work and probably the session will be more of an interactive one where we'll interact with the learning platform so that we can be able to get the feel of it together as we move step by step and be able to deliver on it. So probably the first objective which I'll be able to work is to be able to understand and select the correct program. I will share with you the screen and you can be able to see, I think this is the instance you land on once you land on the demo. And the first thing is you need to be able to pick our particular tracker instance. The first thing is to look at the apps. Once you pick the apps, we'll be able to look for an app called Tracker Capture. So you can just type the word Tracker Capture really fast. The app appears there. And once you click on it, you'll be able to land you to the app rare in. Most of the time, I believe it will land you here. And the most important thing for participants to be able to understand is that the particular tracker of particular activities that is being tracked will be linked to a particular organization unit. An organization unit, for example, for those in health, it could be a health facility, it could be a community unit. Depending on who, whichever tracker entity you're linking it, this is the where you expect that data to come from. And uh, for a particular instance, you can see we have the LAO. And for the LAO, I think there are two ways. There is a the particular facility we want to pick on, and the facility here on your far left, I think you can see. If you click the plus, there's something we call the mother-child relationship. It will give you the substitute of Lao, or rather the children of Lao, Lao VN. I think you can see it there. The one, the two, the three, the four, the six, all the way to all those numbers you're seeing there. And again, if we open again the VN, VN Tane capital, we'll see the CH Mahosut, and the CH Mahosut, the child of it is where we're picking the program. So if you click on it, we'll be able to pick exactly the, pro the org unit which we are reporting from. And on our right, I think you can see the area I, my cursor is running around. These are the different programs we'll have in the system. Down to drop of it will give you the different programs we have. For this particular one, we have a COVID-19 registry. We have the case-based surveillance and we have the contact registration and follow-up. So these are the different programs that are available for this particular entity. So that is a brief on the first objective, being able to allow you to move through the system and be able to pick a particular program. So you can either pick the case-based surveillance, you can pick the registry, you can just pick the case-based surveillance, you can see what it gives me. It will be able to give me the registering units, the registration date, the inactive, the local, the first name, the surname, and the sex. If you pick any other subsequent one, maybe the vaccination registry, it will be able to give you again the same list. So that, for example, for the vaccination list, you can see the first tabs gives you the client with a scheduled visit. And you can see, I think in our system at the moment, only Sharon Ferdinando is the one who's scheduled. 
The next tab will give us clients with an overdue vaccine dose. And please remember all these tabs will be made during the customization of your particular track according to which activity you'll be able to be doing. So you can see here, the next second tab gives you clients with an overdue vaccine dose. The next tab, if you click on it, it will tell us all those who have completed the client list. And the next one, if you click on it, it gives all the clients that have been enrolled in this particular program of vaccination registry. Now, these four tabs appear as a different because of the way the program has been set up. And the key thing to remember is you yourself, you can be able to decide which one will be able to commit to appear here along the list. But sometimes you might need to work on a custom list. This depends on what you yourself would want to see. So if you're working on the custom list, on the far right, there's a custom working list. And here you select what you would want to appear on the list that you see here. So you can see, you can decide the organizational unit scope. Do you want the ones you've selected immediate or the children? For my case here, remember on the far left here, I have selected CHW Mahosot. So this is what it means. It means whatever I am seeing, it's only for the selected organization unit. If I want the immediate children, remember this has no child. But if I click on mouse suit, let's say the mouse suit up here, and I, sorry, as it loads, but it seems no data has been selected on it. But if, if I had selected one that has children, that is where the custom working list would have given me the immediate children or all the children of it. Now, the next area which you can customize on your, what appears here would be on your enrollment status. And here you'll be looking at if, for example, you only want all the people available, all those who've completed the active or the council. And if I just pick, for example, the active, and down here you'll see a button, such to only give me all those in Mahood who at the moment have this particular characteristic of being active. So basically, my point is that using your working custom, you can be able to pick which of these areas you pick and the data will use it as a filter to give you all the data you want. If you want those who've been given user assignment, yes or no. If for example, you have a national ID and you'd want those particular specific ID number, you enter here and it will only give you a number of those particular one that you've given them. I think a good example we can run with is probably what we see here, 66. 09114. And if I search for that, you can see clearly it has only given me data for 24 hours. Those ID number is what I had requested the working list to be able to give me that particular one. Uh, the other areas I think are all those variables which you might have. Maybe you want only the female, you want the male, and everything within your custom working list. And please remember on your custom working list it brings you the list that will appear here on your screen immediately as you're walking through the data. The next thing probably as we go across the screen, I'll be able to show you this button here. This button will be able to give you, if you can be able to download the particular list for which you have on the screen. Let me first of all, remove the ID and have everyone here just a minute. And I just say all, and if I say such, I think you can see it gives me the whole list. So the next button there, I think you can, if you just hover your cursor around it, will be able to allow you to print whatever is on your screen, giving you all the highlights of whatever members are in that particular area. Now, the last button shows hide or show column. If you click on it, the different columns that were appearing on the screen, you have the ability to say what you want to see or what you would not be able to want to see at that particular moment. So the key thing to remember here is that you determine what appears on the screen. So that for example, if I don't want the sex, I don't want the registration date. If I just click that on save, please realize now that my columns are fewer. I'm only seeing the registering unit, the national ID, the first name, the surname and date of birth. And equally, if I want all of it back, I will just pick there and once I save, the system will add those four, all the columns according to what I would want to see on that particular screen. 
That at least gives you the idea of how you can be able to select a particular program, how you can be able to pick or go through the different tabs as you work on that particular program. So the next thing is, it's important to realize that whatever we are seeing here as a program, it will be dependent number one on which organization unit here are the part for you. The organization unit here, which programs have you assigned? But for example, if Meta Hub has not been given case by surveillance, you will not be able to see that program. Anytime you click on it, you will not be able to see. I think I clicked on Masut and you can see clearly no program has been assigned to that particular level of organization. So number one, what determines the programs you see is where it has been assigned. If, for example, for this particular one, it's only being assigned to the children of the Mahut, Mahusot, the children. So that's where you can be able to see the program. And secondly, as you configure the program the system, it is based on your user rights. So that, for example, if you do not have a user right that allows you to see the vaccination registry or to see the case-based surveillance registry or the contact registration follow-up, you will not be able to see upon those two things. So what you view is dependent on your user right, number one, and number two, on the organization unit what has been given upon it. So I would want us to pick one so that we can clearly see how it goes through it. So a critical example is that within this user right, please remember you can be able to see, search the list here so that if you click the particular search button, you will be able to search within the vaccine register program, anything that you'll be able to want to look for. So that for example, I remember there's a name like Sharon, if I click here Sharon, and I search that particular entity, I think I've been able, there's a button here. If I search it, it will give me all the details of everybody bearing the name Sharon. And if I need, for example, to work on this particular Sharon, once I click on it, it will load the details of that particular person I was searching on. That I think explains this button of the search button, the list. And then the most important thing we'll be able to work on next is how do we register a client? We might have a client who was coming we want to register them into the facility. We click on the register. It will give us those particular options for this. But remember yesterday we talked about a tract entity and what are the attributes of that tract entity? The attributes of the tract entities are what appears as the profile of that particular entity. So here we'll be able to enter the disk system. Kindly remember that if you've enabled the map, click on it, it will be able to give you a map of that particular area and. Uh, I think this gives a map of Laos and you can be able to pick the exact position where that particular entity comes from. I don't want to pick one because this will add the variables into it. Please remember a national ID, if that is a number you look, maybe depending on the country you come from, there's a national identification system. This data will be put here. Then you can enter the name, maybe Sharon. Sorry for repeating that name. Be able to pick the agenda, maybe female enter whether you're picking this date as an estimated date of birth, maybe another year, let's say 2003, a particular date like that one, you will pick about it. And important to know, is this date estimated or is this date not known? This is really the case, for example, if you're picking data from people who might not know their date of birth, but they do know their age. So you estimate someone who tells you 18, you will see how many years back that what it is. You can enter their mobile number, their home address, and everything. So in case this a name with a particular one exists, immediately I say save and continue. The system will tell me which other shadows are existing. Because this is to ensure that as we are registering participants in this particular tracker instance, we're able to pick out any duplicates that appear. So for this particular one, you can see I have a number of shadows, which means I need to really identify which is the unique channel I am doing here. But anytime you're doing this with a participant in front of you, I'm sure they would have a different name and every other thing. So if this person exists and you realize that their details, especially here, you can see the columns appearing here. You have the, their date, registration date, they're inactive, their first name, their second name, their ID name, number, and their surname. In case all these variables match for that one particular person, 
you realize that it will flag out and tell me this person really exists in the system. But if the details do not match any of the fields one to one, the system will now allow me to come down here and register him as a new person. I hope that is clear. Let me just go back so that I don't register this particular one. But those will be the steps anytime we're out here registering a new client into the platform. Good. So I want to believe all of us know how we can get the list. We know how we can search someone. And next is we can be able to search that particular person. So I want us to pick all clients and probably for purposes of this, so that we can be able to look through the tracker instance and see how it appears when we pick a particular client. Let's just try and pick this client called Tuba Alpha. Tough. And the system will pick all the clients. And this is now the tracker instance where we'll be able to do our data entry. But it is important that I take you step by step so that you see everything that appears on the window, how we can be able to work with it. Now, this button here is the back button. And anytime you click on it, it will be able to take you back to the whole list of whoever you are working with. So practical example, I think you've all seen, so that anytime you click on this, it will be able to tell you exactly where you're going and which one is it that you're working on. The next bar across here is what we call the top bar button bar. This will appear, and the details that appear here, for example, the surname, the national ID, the unique system identifier, please remember that this is a system generated number depending on how you'll have configured it within the system. It could be that maybe the first three letters EPI, the first immunization program, and this is an auto-generated number that comes from it. Maybe you've told the top bar to also give you a COVID occupation, whether the person is a health worker, and the date of birth and all those that you were interested in. So this is what will be able to give you the top bar. You will be able to customize it. And as we keep on moving, I'll be able to show you how you can customize what appears on this particular bar. The next thing here is the bar here, which will probably pick you, pick you which, which particular tracker entity you're following it through. And here you can pick another one for the same patient, but it will be able to show you if that particular one is interested in. Now, Next, I want to show you the things you're seeing here. I think you can see something I've clicked here, written the enrollment, the indicator, the profile. These will be your widgets. And it's important to know that you can clearly pick one and rearrange it, move it to the right or move it to the left. Or you can pick one, click on it. And as you move it, it will be able to land on that particular area for which you are interested in putting it across to that particular region. These widgets. Sometimes you might need to work on them so that as probably I'm working on Tuba, I would want his details to remain stationary so that as I scroll down this particular thing, as you can see, as I scroll down, everything on my right has moved up and down. I use of this button here, which moves like stick, click on it. It will stick everything that we're seeing on the right. I think now you can see clearly as I scroll down, the details of this particular tracker entity remain fixated on my right hand side. And that means anytime I don't need to scroll up to be able to see who am I dealing with. It still tells me this is Tuba, Altaf, she's female and a date of birth in this. And as I arrange my widgets, all of them will be appearing on the bottom right. Very, very well. So we are all now familiar on how we can stick it. Put the thing to be stagnant and to be able to be used on the bottom right. Next thing we're going to work on is the I button, which means manage person. If you click on it, it will be able to allow you to activate a vision for a person, a tracker entity. Let us remember that as we're looking on the other side, we're able to pick the different regions where the entity will be. They could either be active or they could be inactive. Delete the person is a very sensitive button, which should only be used if you're really sure you'd want to remove that tracker entity completely within the tracker instance. So this is a very careful one. And most times it is only the system admin who will be able to see this particular button. 
And the reason is we do not want anybody anywhere using the system to be able to quickly come in and delete an individual. Now, the last one, which looks like a gear or a setting, which is setting icon, I think, on most of our apps. If you click on it, it will allow you to do a number of things. Remember, we talked about the widgets, the different areas that you can be able to, we were seeing here. So if you click show or hide widget, the different widgets we were looking at previously on our system, sorry. The different widgets we were seeing at our different system are these ones. So you can see the current selection, timeline, data entry, tabular data entry, enrollment, the feedback, the indicator, the messaging, the notes, the profile, the relationship and everything. So if you want any of these widgets to appear, this is where you'd be able to pick it up and let it will appear on the screen or on your tracker dashboard anytime you're working on it. So remember you can customize your tracker dashboard so that if I want, for example, this not to appear, maybe the tabular data entry not to appear, sorry, the enrollment or the feedback not to appear and everything. Once I done the, I've done that and I close, you'll realize now on the toolbar here, all those have disappeared because this allows me to customize what appear, widget appears on my tracker dashboard instance or rather on the face of it. Settings again, show you widget. You can click, I think I want all of them there. So I'll just do that. And uh, immediately I click on close. All those that I previously removed, you can see the current selection, edit, and the profile, the relationship, the program, and all those are appearing there after that. The next thing is the saved dashboard layout as default. So this one will allow you to be able to see the way I have arranged everything that appeared as my dashboard. I can be able to set it to be a default layout. This means that anytime I come into the system with my user right, the things and the widgets will be arranged in a certain manner, which I have decided would be my way the things arrange themselves on my screen. That is well understood. So once you click on it, to be able to pick yours and save it again. The next thing I'll be able to say is the top bar setting. You remember we talked about this screen here where my casa is, and we call it the top bar setting. So at the moment, our top bar setting is giving me my surname, my national ID, my unique identifier, my occupation, and my date. So if I click on it, it will allow me to see what do I want to appear on that particular top bar, which is basically what attributes of the entity I am tracking do I want to appear on my top bar. So these are the things you want. So probably, as you can see, the system I was working with had the surname, the national ID, the EPI, the COVID occupation, the date appearing on my top bar at any particular moment. So if I come in again, I can be able to unlock. Maybe I say, I don't want this. I want this and this. Maybe I just want the surname. I don't want the ID. And if I click on them, just a minute, sorry. So if I click on the show and I click here, you will see again, things have changed on my top bar according to what I have deselected or selected. Maybe I can try and remove the unique identifier and see if it appear, disappears. Yes. You can see very, very fast. The unique identifier has disappeared on my top bar. Lock layout for all users. I think this is a facility that is available, but please remember it can only be used by an administrator of the system. Not anybody would be able to use this particular button. But if you are a user button and probably you want everyone seeing a custom place so that we do not have confusion. Those of you who've taken part in IT, in training people, especially for digital platform, sometimes someone will come in and tell you, yours does not look like mine on the screen. So in case you're doing something like a training or you want people to only use a system in a particular format and you're an administrator, you'll be able to lock the layout so that anytime you say, look to your left, it's what will appear to the left for everyone. Because if someone has rearranged it, the left will have a different thing, thing that clearly explains to you what, what can happen on that particular area. Now, <clears throat> The next button I think I'll go through is uh, down here. Let me just move my screen down here. 
this button here, I think you can all see that arrow, top, right and left. So this one allows you to scroll to the next patient, for example, on that line listing. So that for example, the next patient I think on my license was Rahim. And if I click this one, it will take me to the wherever I had previously and uh, previous before that can be able to pick all that. Who for this particular case was Sharon. So let's hope we've been able to understand. The back takes you to the other side. The shadow, the top bar allows you to see all the details you want. The pin restricts what appears here on my right. The eyes for deactivating and adding. This is how you customize a few things that appear on your screen right here with you. The next thing probably I'll be able to work on is we'll be able to look at all the bars that we need to work on it. I hope. I believe I am not very, very fast, but in case I am fast, I hope I can slow down and all of us can be able to work through and get everything we're going through together. So the next thing I'm going to look at is we're gonna look at uh, how these widgets, if you can be able to move them, I think I'd be able to, can be able to close them. I think if you click on there, it will ask you, are you about to remove a widget? Do you want to remove it? Maybe you do not want it to be able to be seen. So you can either pick a no or a yes. And uh, this will allow you to expand it. If I want to expand a particular widget, I'll be able to minimize it, as you can see. Maybe here, the edit profile, I want to, to my expand it, or I want to decrease it. All those will be able to work on it. And please remember for each of the widget that comes along with it, it allows you to be able to do a few variable things here. For example, for the profile, if there is any detail, I have been able to get about shadow that I would want to improve. If I click on edit, it will take me to the registration data and maybe I can now add a national ID or any of those particular details that come with it, maybe the date of birth and all those things that appear on these things. Please Remember, for you to edit this, you might need to all those particular details that you want to improve on that particular widget. And at the end of the day, you will be able to add notes and do all those things, and it will be able to pick them up very, very clearly. I would beg to move to the next thing, which is the data entry app. And uh, a good example, let me see if the next one had more than one program entity. Yeah, let's look at Altaf. And if we look at a tough, we can see a, a number of things have happened to her. And uh, the details here gives you a brief description of what events are go supposed to happen to this, or which programs he's been enrolled to. So he's been enrolled to vaccination. And I think uh, you can see the organization in it. If you hover about it, he's in Mausut, he's in a program stage on the vaccination and his date is on the, October the 27th is when this particular person was enrolled in this particular program. And again, we can see again is overdue for that particular vaccination. So this gives you a detail of all the programs that Mahut is supposed to be entitled to. And in case we need to give him a particular program, maybe it's a vaccination, we'll be able to click in and we'll be able to look on it severally. But let me just go through the icon that appear here. Now, the first icon here to be able to show the event menu. You click on it, all the expected events are already present and cannot create any more events. So it gives you a brief description. In case you need to add a new program to this particular one, you'll be able to click on the plus. And if there's any new, please just remember if there's any new program for which this particular individual can be enrolled onto, you'll be able to give you that. This will give you an event, just close on it. And in case this person has been able I can see it is not due for any of this activity. So probably I'll try and pick an event like case-based surveillance and we'll see if we can be able to pick a number of those entities. Let's go back to the registry, I'm sorry, for that particular hitch up. Let me go back and pick a patient on the list who's active, who is due for a particular activity. All the clients and let's look at 
someone who is active. Sharon Fernando. This one is scheduled for particular activity. We can see a very good example. She's scheduled for vaccination from the 26th of November. And this gives us a clear perspective of what she has. If you look through the particular activities she's been able to go through, you look at the indicator, age is 52, she has received an AstraZeneca vaccine and all the data she's supposed to be due for. I'm trying to see if we can get a particular client who's due for immunization so that we can be able to look at them clearly. So let's look at uh, our colleague here who, who is due to be receiving a second vaccine, but she's long overdue. So the vaccination schedule will appear here. And please remember that anytime you're able to put a program or an event into a program, we will need to be able to pick the date that this particular client has been able to come for maybe the 16th. And this is the only thing, once you pick the date is when all the other entries will be able to be opened up. That means the event must have happened for the system to allow you to enter all the particular things in that particular program that were due for. So that for example, you can see, does he have any underlying condition? And this is what will actually be happening as we do the data entry for that particular individual. First, please remember, you must be able to pick a date and for you to do this, please remember the event must have happened. Otherwise, if it has not happened, then as you click on it, you will not have the necessary data to be able to enter into these particular areas that you're interested in entering data to. So I will be able to probably keep some demi data. Let's say he has no underlying deletion. We'll be able to pick whether he has any cardiovascular. Remember, please, this keep logic allows you to enter things only when it's available. So that, for example, here, if I pick no, please realize all the underlying conditions have disappeared. I will not be able to enter an underlying condition if in this particular instance, I have said this particular person, you say underlying condition, yes, sorry. I think my internet is was quite not stable, but now it should be good. You'll be able to see now, I need to pick any underlying that condition that this particular individual has. If I pick no, the underlying condition disappears. Previously infected with COVID again, you'll be able to say, if I say yes, you'll be able to pick me, tell me this vaccine is not recommended for people who have been. It's only recommended for those who have not had a vaccine for before 90 days. So these are some of the things that probably, as you design the program, they'll be able to be put and put them at the back end so that if someone says yes, you realize all of a sudden, I will not be able to issue them with a vaccine. But if I say no, it will allow me to give the vaccine, maybe pick a vaccine name, AstraZeneca, be able to, again, query me. Am I sure this particular individual I'm about to give a vaccine, are they able? to be over 18. These are the program rules, which I think at some point you'll be able to be trained, how you develop them at the back end so that immediately tells me you're giving AstraZeneca to someone and they 18 and over. If they're not, the system will be able not be able to allow me, be able to pick a manufacturer, uh, the batch number, probably a number which you will be able to pick from that particular date, pick the expiry date, let me pick just a random date. The dose number, I think, is it the first dose, is it the second dose, or is it a booster dose? Please remember, if this person had been enrolled in the system previously and received the first dose, this first dose will not be able to appear as active, but it will be able, the system will be able to run at the back end.
So let's just, let let me continue sharing my screen. I hope I did not go very, very far. Good. Apologies once again. My power went off as I was trailing. I think I didn't pick it up, but now you can be able to see. So I'll briefly go back to what I was talking about. And here I was telling the participants that once in a while, once you pick a client and all these program rules will enable you to be able to pick up which particular no or yes you can be able to pick. So that if you pick no, the program rules will be able to allow you to either allow that particular client to be given a vaccine or not. Uh, anytime we come all the way and you click complete, we can allow the system to give you a validation pop-up so that it will be able to tell you whether the vaccine is recommended or not recommended for those particular patients. So that if I think the person, the patient is 18 and they should be able to receive the vaccine, I'll be able to quickly click complete. And once I click complete, remember I've given them a vaccine, a one dose, through the program rule, we'll be able to schedule the next vaccine. Remember the program rule, if the vaccine is to be given after 60 days, the system will complete, calculate the, the particular days and give me the calendar date. And it will ask me if I can be able to save for that particular client so that they can be able to come back on that particular date. That is a brief thing. And please realize that for Mahsut, if you remember, the color here was brown, but because I've administered the program and completed their particular administration of that particular thing, the immunization that he was scheduled for, this has changed to a different color, meaning now only the scheduling is what I need to be able to do and maybe schedule him for vaccination. And you can see his due date is November 26. And once I click on it, I'll be able to schedule him there. So I hope that tells you how you can schedule someone. Be able to pick a patient within the same program, schedule him for that particular event. And how you schedule is you use the calendar icon you can be able to see here. Now, maybe my, my, the next time he comes, we do not have the particular vaccine and I would want him to get it at a different facility. If you look at this button here, it will allow me to make a referral. Clicking on it, because the patient is not ready for that particular service, it does not allow me to refer him to the future date. But if they had come in on that particular date and they needed to be referred to a new facility, the system would have allowed me to quickly click on it, be able to schedule and put that particular patient ready for referral for that particular incident. I think that covers how we will be able to work on that particular area where we are able to refer. Let's just have a peep on our objective to see how far we've been able to do. Uh, I think all of us now are quite well. We can be able to select a particular program. The next thing I will be able to look at is to understand the layout and the option of the tracker capture. Uh, I've gone through the different areas of that track. Capture. I want to believe all of us can now see which icon, what bar, how to adjust it, how to move it. How to register an entity, I believe we've done it. We've gone through a particular person, we've added them. We've seen how we can be able to search them and see if they are a duplicate or if they're not. Uh, demonstrate how to search for a tracker entity, I think that should be the next thing we can be able to do. So, although I know we already did it, if we came back to here, remember we had this button here of search. So I remember telling you, you can search a pattern, either you have any of their attributes, you can quickly search for them. For example, if there's anybody called Alan, you can quickly click on the name Alan. And uh, and if you click on search, the system will search us and tell us no person was found. So this Alan, what you can probably do is you need to register him afraid because he does not exist into this particular entity. We have not been registered into our database. But if the name existed, I think all of you remember the name Sharon. Anytime we search for Sharon, the system will be able to pick it and give us a list of all the Sharons that are available. And we can quickly be able to pick which particular Sharon, remembering that we have other attributes of Sharon, which we want to look out. Maybe we have a national ID and we also have a surname. So if it's Sharon Fernandez, that is the patient, we'll search them, we'll click them. 
And once we've clicked them, we'll have loaded them into the tracker data entry entity, and we can be able to see she's scheduled for a vaccine on the 26th of November. If there's anything we need to do, we can be able to work on it. Look at her data. If we need to work on her and we need to put the right side stagnant, we just click on this and we can scroll down and Sharon details will be able to remain there all through. Let me go again to my objective and see which one I might not have been able to do. Demonstrate how to create a relationship within a tracker capture instance. I think this is what we need to do next. Again, I hope I'm not very, very, very fast. So we'll come back to the entity, to our attacker instance, and let's just pick an entity called, let's pick the case-based surveillance, because some of the relationships that will be able to be done are based on a program. If you look at case-based surveillance, maybe is a case where we're looking at all the cases of COVID. So that, for example, if you have got a person who's, who has had a COVID, in, who has had COVID and probably you need to add a relationship to a new entity who are the contact persons who has come onto it. So we might need to pick probably a client. Remember that. So probably this is a particular client we're looking at. You can see the client we're looking at is Sharon Fernandez. Maybe we need to add a relationship because in this particular case, we realize that Sharon has a particular person who she came into contact with. In your bottom right, I think you can see some relation, add a relationship. And if you click on it, it will be able to pop up. Just a minute. I think we need to enroll her first and then we can add a relationship. Sorry, I think the details that it needs for this particular person before I can move on. Local, enroll. And once I've done the enrollment, it will now allow me to add a relationship very, very well. So since I've enrolled Sharon on our case-based surveillance, we now need to know something about Carol and maybe it's a relationship. So Sharon came into the facility. She has a relationship of a contact to a particular individual. If you click here, we can now see has been a contact. And if she has been a contact, we need to know who she has been a contact with. Is it someone in the case-based surveillance? Is it someone in the vaccine registration or the case-based surveillance? And whoever this particular person has been, we will quickly be able to search her here and add the particular relationship that we want to add on to. Maybe we need to know, fill at least one, or we can search that particular person here. Maybe the name was Altef. Let me just say, maybe the name is Jen. I don't know if there's a Jen in the database. If I search Jen, good. It will give me a list of all the genes. And once I pick a particular gene and say, this is the gene, that means at my point to tell me, this person has been in contact with this person, in the system. So anytime I search the system to be able to tell me that Sharon was a contact of Jane, and if I save to be able to keep that particular relationship, and you can see it at the bottom right here, telling me clearly, this is a relationship of this particular person. This tracker entity that we are following on came into contact with this but other person who is someone we already have already in our system. That will be able to cover for that. I believe I have done a number of all the objectives I have to cover. And the last one is to understand skip logic. I believe we've done it, but just for benefit of everyone, we can go back to it. You remember when we were looking at here, the program entity, we said the program entity might look at an issue of something having an underlying case. So that for example, if we say pregnant here, if we say yes, there are a few questions you will ask us. The skip logic is telling us what is a gestation, what is a trimester, and what is a postpartum, how many weeks in postpartum is she into. So that is the skip logic. But if I said here no, realize that it will not ask me the question relating to that particular pregnancy. So that there's few things, program rules that we can be able to add as we design the tracker entity that it follows up on all those particular entities. I beg to stop there because let me believe I have done every entity that was on our learning objective. 
I've been able to show you how we select a program, how we work on the layout of that particular tracker instance. I believe we can now all be able to register a tracker entity, putting all the details of that particular entity. How we can be able to understand how to fill in the program stage details. I think we picked a program, we looked into it, how to search a tracker entity within the system, how to create a relationship. We've done that for Jen and Sharon. And lastly, I've been able to show you about the skip logic and how it works as a program rule within the data entry rules. Thank you very much. I don't know if there are questions, but I'll be able to look at them down here at the message book and be able to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Wesley. I think we can spare five minutes to respond to questions that are part of, of the Slack channel, if at all they have not yet been responded to. But also, I could see. Uh, I don't know if this is a question, but we have something on the chat box, but it's it's not in English. So to start with, maybe I could just go back to Slack and read the questions and all the facilitators will be able to respond to. So there is first question asking, how do I get the same tracker demo? that she shared during the tracker data model. The presenter did not demonstrate how she got to COVID-19 case-based surveillance. Okay. So uh, for this part on how you, you access the tracker programs, it has been part of today's session, at the very beginning of the session. But if Wesley could quickly show us just a few steps on how you could access the tracker programs be highly appreciated so that we have every every participant aware of that in case they had joined a bit late okay i believe you said you come here and maybe you can guide me further i think on the dashboard dhis dashboard you'll be able to pick on this right the level one Sorry, Adidia, are you there Adija, you can guide me because. Sorry. Could you please repeat? Yes. I'm saying you can guide me so that I can walk with them together as we move through, as we click through to get to that instance. Using my shared screen. Wesley, I think this question was in regard to the tracker, what you've just been yeah. demonstrating. So we need to go to the. Demo instance, the instance that we are just using to demonstrate and show us how do we access the tracker programs before getting into all the registration process. Thank you. I think my bad, I understood it differently. So I think once you log into the system, this will be a landing page. This is normally known as a dashboard, as you can see on the bottom top here. It's known as a dashboard. You will be able to be told maybe in a different circumstances how you can be able to create this particular dashboard and how you can populate it so that yours is only custom made for you. So for us to learn to where we had, we came here to the bottom, top, top right, sorry. You can see where my cursor is. If you click on it, a number of applications will appear. And what we said is I just type the name tracker. And once we click the name tracker capture will appear. Clicking on the tracker capture, the system will load the tracker. And uh, by default, it is, it is loading up to the facility where I was last time. But ideally, when it loads, it should be able to load only using LAO PDR. Let's look at the bottom left, on our right here, left here. Only LAO PDR will be able to be appearing. But now we need to be able to search the entity that enters that particular data. There are two options you can do it. If you know the particular unit that is reporting, you can type its name here and it will be able to search. Please remember, if I pick LAO PDR, you realize it is not linked to any system. It's not written to any tracked system. I said clearly that for you to be able to see the programs that are linked to it, there are two things. The, system, the organization unit needs to be linked to it. And for our particular training, the organization unit linked to it is this one written CHW MAHO sort. So you can either click on it, but if you don't know it, you can just type here MAHO. 
sorry, Mahosat, it will only link you to all the two of them. Then if you click on them, it will link you to the program. For the program to load, please notice these changes to yellow. That means I have selected that particular org unit that is reporting onto it. And once it has linked into it, you show me here, vaccine registry. It will list to me all the programs linked to Mahosut, CHW Mahosut. And for this particular one, you can see there's a vaccination registry, there's a case-based surveillance and the contact registration workflow. So that's number one that links to it. It is linked to the Mahosut org unit. The second one is depending on your user rights, if you've been not been allocated that program, you will log in and come all the way to Mahusut, but you will not see this program because your user right has not been given that particular access to the program. So two things, access to the program is based on the organization unit that has been given. Number two, the user right. Do you have user right to access that particular program? Thank you. I hope that answers it well. Thank you, Wesley. Uh, we have another question from a participant in the chat uh, who is asking how to access this particular demo instance. Yeah. So I, I'm not so sure what do they mean the demo instance? Because I believe as we were beginning the lecture, Adija took us through where we can get it through the Moodle and flow all the way to that particular site. Maybe Harita, you can take them again. I can stop sharing. And probably if you're keen, please look on the comment. Vini has replied and he has given the login credential, the Academy website instance. And if you're in the session, if you just click on it, I'm sure here, it will be able to pop in and you'll be able to log into that particular one. Those of you who are in the chat of the Zoom chat, the instance address is given there. Thank you. Thank you, Wesley. So I'll walk you through on how to access uh, the demo instance. So once you have logged into the Moodle, you should be able to access uh, this screen here, which has the part of announcements, Zoom meetings, and the rest. So all the all the links have been, I mean, can they, they can be accessed under the announcements part. So once you click announcement, it will take you to the training platforms. So select training platform. Once you have selected that, then it will provide you with the link of every platform that you'll be required to use during this academy. So for the demonstration, this is the link. And this is the one that you have the access to capture data as well as analyze. So you can play around with this instance as much as you can. And for the in instance for the quiz or exercise part, this is only for the analysis exercises. So you'll only be able to analyze and not do the data entry part. I hope that is clear. Okay, so since like some of you couldn't see my screen, I'll reshare it again. I hope it's now visible. Okay, I'll go back a step. So once you have logged in to the Moodle, this, will, this is one of the uh, inter interfaces that you'll be able to see. It's From still here, dark, Hadija. There is nothing on the screen. It's only dark. Okay, thank you. Let me see how I can...
Okay, I hope you can see something right now. Yes, we can. Thank you. Yes, so, we can. All right. So once you have logged into Moodle, I believe we can all access this page under the track I use Academy, of course. So we have the first link, which reads as announcements. This is where we can access all the links to all the platforms that we will be using, both Slack as well as the DHS2 instances. So once you click on the announcements, you'll be taken again to this link, which is reading as training platforms. So you also have to go through that. So once you select trading platforms, this is where now you can access all the links to the three platforms. One is Slack, the first one. And the second link is for the demonstration, the DHS2 instance. And this one for the demonstration, you can play around it as much as you can, both, both ways in, in terms of data input, meaning like you could register tracked entity instances, register the data, as well as any, any, anything that you would wish to go through in terms of practicing. But once we get into the analysis sessions, then you can also use the same link to follow what the facilitators would be uh, training you on. But for all the exercises, especially on the analysis exercises, you'll be required to use this tracker use exercise link, which reads as uh, academy.demos.dhs2. But what slash tracker underscore use underscore quiz. So this instance will only be used for assignments. And to be specific, it's the assignments on analysis part. Today's assignment and yesterday's assignment will, will not require you to go and do something in the DHS2 part. So just for the purpose of learning and make sure that you follow what you're trained on, use the demo. I hope that is clear now. Hadija, maybe we need, uh, you need to add one link that is used by Wesley for the uh, session that we just completed because that, uh, that instance is different from demo. It's like the COVID-19 vaccination, case base, et cetera. Apparently what, what Wesley was using, it's basically a copy of this demo. So you are given access to this because you can do anything that you want. And just to avoid messing up uh, the already available data, that is why we sort of separated it in terms of what uh, the facilitators could access and what participants could access. Uh, maybe just to add to that, uh, we need to make sure that we are all accessing the one that ends with tracker underscore use underscore demo. If you're accessing the one that has tracker underscore use underscore quiz, you'll find that you do not have access to tracker capture. So let's just all make sure that we are on the demo instance and you'll be able to access all the COVID uh, programs on there. So you can see that currently uh, what is being shown is the demo instance and all the COVID programs are available. I hope that is clear. And the demo instance that uh, I uh, that we access using our username doesn't have any dashboard, right? The dashboard is empty. Okay, so the dashboard might be empty because we still haven't done that session yet. But are you able to access the tracker capture? Hello, are you able to access the tracker capture and see the different programs? Maybe, maybe on the instance, on the exercise instance, we can't, we can't access the tracker capture, but yeah. on the demo instance, we can. Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, just a few more questions before we go for the break. Uh, yeah.
So I think this is a question for Wesley. If the specific track tract entity that I would like to link is registered in different programs, do I have to link all of the programs? Wesley, I think that's a question for you. Please repeat the question because I can't read it. Okay, it's a question from Slack. If the specific tract entity that I would like to link is registered in different programs, do I have to link all of the programs? I don't think you need to because remember anytime you click the program, you'll be able to get that particular entity that is in that particular program. An important thing to mention here is that uh, you can actually enroll a particular entity without rolling it into a particular program. So that an entity track entity will be available, but you'll be able to work on it later and add it to a particular program. But if you're appearing in more than one program, you don't need to be registered into all those programs, but you just need to be added to those particular programs. I hope that answered it. Thank you, Wesley. I hope that's clear for everyone. Uh, how do I view the history audit? That's the next question. How do I view the history audit? Wesley, I think that's for you as well. I think what someone is referring to is that they need to see what someone has undergone through, what they have received. Let us remember, I don't know if I can share my screen. Let us remember what, uh, share the screen. I think this is it. Good. Let us remember that, for example, anytime I click on a client like Adnan, I'll be able to get as part of his history anything he has been able to receive as part of their history. If I need to edit it now, that's a different case because you can see, for example, I'm now looking at this particular client known as Rahim of my channel identity number one, two, three, four. If I need to know his history, I can see he has previously taken. AstraZeneca, and this is the history of him. On the October, he received this. On 16th, he got this. And on the 26th, he received no vaccine, but he has an entity. So all this, I think, is what someone is asking, if they can be able to look at the history. The tabular data entry will be able to give you all the particular history of that particular person, what they have received, what they have come in for. And for example, here, the program, each of those particular things they received at what particular stage event in that program be able to see. For example, you can see he got opened here on the 28th of October. And if you click on it, you'll be able to see everything that he received. What he completed again, you can see uh, the schedule for 26th. You can see it's blank because he has not received anything. I hope I'm answering them because I want to believe they're asking, can I look at the history of a particular client? So anytime you go back here and you pick a client, like Tuba, as part of what comes in your tracker is a history of what they have been able to receive. You can see the year he received on the 10th, this is what he was scheduled and what when he's is scheduled for the next one. Let me hope I answered. Thank you, Wesley. Uh, just to add to that, um, there are times when you might want to see an audit of who has done what on the system. So this is possible by uh, going to, when you open a program stage, you're able to select, when you open a program stage, you're able to, to view the audit history. So 
uh, here under our tabular data entry that uh, under our tabular data entry, you see that we have a little head of a person there, an icon that takes us to the audit history. So if you click on that icon, you're able to see an audit history. Here it's not being captured, but then uh, as data, depending on the configuration of your program, uh, if you have configured it to capture this audit history, you'll be able to see that so-and-so made either an update to this record, to this particular data element on this date and at this time. You're able to see that so-and-so maybe deleted this from this program stage on this date at this time. I hope uh, that conclusively answers the questions. So over to you, Hadija. Thank you, Daisy. So I think we can take five minutes break. But before that, I would like to announce that we have an upcoming Analytic Tools Academy sometime in December, specifically from the 6th to 17th of December. So I'll just share the registration form on the chat box. So if you're interested, please apply to the Academy. Otherwise, uh, take five minutes to stretch yourself, then we can come back and proceed on the second part of the today's session. Sorry, Khadija, did you did you send it to our personal email? Oh, I've just shared it on the chat box. Oh, okay, okay, I see it. Okay. Uh, the learning objectives. Uh, the point of this session is to explain the Android, uh, uh, the Android app, to demonstrate how we can install the Android app, and then uh, demonstrate how tracker data can be captured on Android devices. So we're going to have a look at how we can search for tracked entities within the Android app, how we can register new tracked entities, how we can navigate a person's tracked entity dashboard on the Android app how we can enter event data within program stages, how we can complete an enrollment, how we can enter relationships, uh, enroll a tracked entity on multiple programs. And then finally, we can see how we can work with the uh, tracker data offline. So a brief introduction to the Android app. Uh, it is a mobile application and it is designed to function seamlessly with your DHIS2 instance. What does this mean? It is designed to function in a way that whatever you have on your DHIS2 instance is what will appear in the Android capture app, okay? So it supports data capture across the DHIS2 data models. Yesterday, we, were, uh, we talked about the different data models. And uh, so it allows data capture through aggregate, and then also it allows capture of individual level data for tracker and event programs. Uh, for this session, since we're in a tracker use academy, we are going to focus on capture of individual level data for tracker. And then this app functions both online and offline. Okay, so it means that even without internet, we are able to continuously capture our data using the Android app. So we need internet connection at the point of logging into the app. And at the point of pushing data and uh, yeah, pushing data to the to the DHIS2 instance, and also at the point of pulling the data that's already existing on the DHIS2 instance and pulling the configurations that are existing on the DHIS2 instance. So that is basically how the app functions. Uh, to emphasize, it is a DHIS2 Android capture app. So it is currently only accessible on Android devices, devices that are running the Android operating system. Uh, it, communication was shared earlier that we should all, communication was shared earlier that we should all try to go to our Google Play Store and download the app. I hope we all managed to do that.
So for those who did not manage to, we are going to just briefly run through the process of how we can download the app. The app is accessible on Google Play Store, as Alia mentioned. So when we open our Google Play Store, we can search for DHIS2 Capture. DHIS2 Capture. So with that, it's going to show us the DHIS2 Capture. Since I already have it installed on my device, or uh, I have the option of open, but if you do not already have it, you will have the option of install and you'll be able to install it onto your device. After installation, it will appear in your list of apps. You can see in the top right hand corner, that is how it appears. It is DHIS2 with a DHIS2 logo. So when you open the app for the first time, When you open the app for the first time, this is what it looks like. So it asks you for the URL of your instance, your username and your password. So for this particular session, we are still going to use our demo instance. So we are going to use uh, HTTPS uh, Academy dot demo dot dhis2 dot org okay slash tracker underscore use underscore demo okay so that is what we are using for this particular session then we are going to use the user account we're going to use is android one Android one and its password is uh, is district with a capital D. District with a capital D one and a hash. So I can see in the chats that some people are saying that they're still installing the app. Uh, we're going to take one minute and hopefully everyone will have it downloaded by then in one minute. So just to re-emphasize, we are using the demo instance that is the instance that ends with tracker underscore use underscore demo. It's the one we are using for this session. Uh, the login credentials, the username is Android one. The password is district with a capital D one hash. This information is also accessible in the learner's guide for the Android uh, data capture using Android session within Moodle. If you if you go to your Moodle and open that session, you'll be able to see a learner's guide. So I do hope that we've all been able to download the app and we've been able to to get to this point where we enter the server URL, we enter the username and we enter the password. So after all this is done, you can go ahead and tap on login. It will inform you that uh, error logs are going to be shared in order to improve performance. Just click continue. So at this point, it will go into authenticate and then it will also begin to pull the data that is currently existing on the DHIS2 instance and it will pull that data onto the device.
Are we able to download the app? Yes. So I hope we've all been able to download the app and uh, log in successfully. Sorry about that. Uh, there was a brief technical glitch. I hope we have all uh, been able to log in and sync our configuration as well as sync our data. Uh, this process, uh, the, the length of time this process takes is dependent on the amount of data that uh, you're pulling to your device, depending, it varies on uh, the different instances. Some of the instances have more data than others. So at this point, what it's trying to do is to pull all your configurations of your programs and uh, of your instance onto the device. It is also then going to try and pull all the data to the device as well. Okay, so I can see that some users have been able to log in successfully.
So the URL is the same as the, the one we've been using for the demo, the one that's academies.demos.dhis2.org slash tracker use demo. And the username is Android one and the password is a district with a capital D one hash. Is anyone having trouble with logging in? Please, can you repeat what the username is? The username is Android one, lowercase, all lowercase, and then a one at the end. And then the password is district with a capital D, and then a one and a hash. So you can see that it's telling me that my configuration is ready and it's now going to go on to sync the data. Wow, I can see some participants uh, saying that they have already finished syncing and it's working fine. All right, I have also been able to sync successfully. And you can see that the, the landing page, once you have logged in and been able to sync, is a page that shows you all the available programs. Okay. So for this particular instance, all the programs that we have are tracker based, but you'll find that where you also have aggregate programs, it will show you a few of the data sets you have there as well. So the first program we're going to look at is the COVID-19 case-based surveillance. So at this point, you get to select whichever program you are interested in entering data on. So we're going to start with the COVID-19 case-based surveillance. So once you select the program, it brings you a list of all the available track entity instances that are uh, registered on that particular program. So you can see the different track entity instances. It also shows you a few of their track entity attributes so that you can be able to tell which track entity instance is which. For example, you can see Matthew and see his, uh, his identifier. You can see Thai, Anna. So that's how it works but it has brought you a list of all the tracked entity instances that are attached to the program and are in the organization unit that your account has access to. However, I might not want to keep going through this entire list of uh, tracked entity instances to find the one instance that I need to update or the one instance whose information I need to see. So in the top right-hand corner, you see that we have uh, three lines in the top right hand corner. So if you tap those three lines in the top right hand corner, you get to see different filters. So these filters help you to reduce the list. These filters help you to reduce the list and pick just a particular group of drug entity instances that you're interested in. For example, you might want to filter by the event date. Event date in this case is uh, for case based surveillance is the date that a particular event happened. Uh, yesterday, we were, we were told the difference between an event, a uh, track entity instance, and all that. So an event date is the date that a particular 
event happen. So you might want to see trust entity instances that have had an event maybe today or yesterday or last month. Then we can also filter by the case registration date. So in this case for, for tracker pest programs, that could be the basically the registration date, the date that a particular trust entity instance was registered on 2A program. Okay. So you can choose to filter by that. You can choose to filter by the organization units. If you are attached to multiple organization units, you might want to see only trust entity instances that are attached to a particular, maybe a particular facility, or for those who are implementing the EMIS, uh, DHIS for education, you might want to see only trust entity instances that are attached to a particular school. So, um, yeah, so there are two options. You can either type the organization unit within the search, or you can tap on the right hand side of the search box. We have something that looks like a tree with branches. You can tap on that tree and it will bring you the entire organization unit hierarchy. Please note that this is dependent on the access rights that your account has. So I could expand uh, Lao. I expand uh, Asian capital, expand, and then I select a particular facility, depending on your organization unit structure. Then I might as I might want to be to filter based on the sync status. So we are later going to look at how we sync. Uh, you'll find that there are some trust entity instances that are synced, some of them are maybe not yet synced, some have errors. So you can filter based on that, that status. Maybe you want to see only those that have been synced or you want to see only those that are not yet synced or only those that are having errors with the sync. You can also filter based on the enrollment status. You can filter based on the enrollment status. Maybe you want to see those with an active enrollment, those with a completed enrollment or a cancelled enrollment. And then the event status, okay? Maybe you want to see those who have open events, those who have an upcoming event, they've been scheduled for an event, those who have an overdue event, and those whose event is completed. Okay, so I hope uh, that bit is clear. I hope that bit is clear to all of us. Those are the filters that we have within the app. Okay, but also before we begin to register a, a Tract entity instance, we have to be sure that that tract entity instance is not already existing in the system. Or possibly you might even want to search for a, a particular one particular tract entity instance that you already know exists in the system. So, in order to do that, at the top, you see that we have at the top, we have uh, COVID 19, the name of the program. Right next to that, in between that and the filters button, you should be able to see. You should be able to see a, a glass, like a magnifying glass. Okay, so when you type on that, it's it's a search, it's a search button. It brings you different criteria by which you can search for a tract entity instance. Okay, so for the case of this particular program, we can search by the system generated case ID, the local case ID, the first name, the surname, and the country of residence. Okay. So these differ from program to program, depending on how the particular program is configured. So I might want to search for a particular client. Maybe her name is Brianna. So I will type Brianna, okay? And her last name is Richard. So I will type Richard, okay? So at the bottom, at the bottom right-hand corner, we have two buttons. We have one big button that has like a such icon, a magnifying glass. And then we have a smaller button that has an arrow that's almost in a circle. So the big button enables us to continue with our search, while the smaller button enables us to reset our search page. Maybe I have typed all these things and I want to clear. I can always use the smaller button. I am going to click on the big button because I want to continue with the search. And when I start, you see that it will bring me that one client that has that name, okay? If there are many with the same name, Brianna Richards, it's going to bring me a list of all the Brianna Richards, okay? 
So if I want to go ahead and see the information pertaining to this uh, Brianna, Rich, uh, Brianna Richards, I can tap on her, her name where it is listed. I tap on her. And it's going to bring me her dashboard. Okay. It is going to bring me her dashboard. Okay. So this is uh, Wesley shared with us a trust entity instance dashboard within the web. So within the Android app, this is the equivalent of the Trust Entity Instance Dashboard. This is where we can find all the information uh, concerning a particular Trust Entity Instance. In our case, the, the Trust Entity Instance is a case. So we can find all the information concerning this particular case that is named Brianna Richardson, okay? So you can see that uh, we have her name there and her ID, we have her case registration date, we have her enrolling organization unit. Yeah. And then next we have a button that says see details and then share. And then we have the different program stages within this particular program. So we have our stage one, which is clinical examination, stage two lab requests, stage three lab results, stage four health outcomes. Okay. But at the bottom of the screen, if you can look at the bottom of your screen, you should be having four buttons. Okay. So the first button that looks like a clipboard, that particular button is the page that opens by default. This tracked entity uh, dashboard, it takes you to that particular page that shows you the different program stages. It is the default page that opens once you select a tracked entity instance. The next button, which looks like a, bug, a, a graph, that button takes you to where you can see the different indicators pertaining to that particular trust entity instance. So you're able to see, uh, in the case of this COVID uh, surveillance program, we are able to see the patient's age, the total number of tests we have had, and so on, okay? Then we have our third button here, which deals with the relationships, okay? Remember yesterday we were told that we are able to have relationships between different trust entity instances, okay? So this button is able to list the relationships that this trust entity instance has with other trust entity instances. We're going to look at that uh, in more detail later. And then the final button, Apologies about that, there was a drop in the internet connectivity. So the final button at the bottom of our screen is the notes button, okay? So you have an option of adding notes. Maybe there's something that's not being captured by the predefined data elements that you have noticed about a particular case or a particular patient or a particular student, depending on your instance. You can always use that, that, that notes button and add any notes that are uh, anything about this uh, patient that you, this trapped entity instance that you would want other people who access it to know. Okay, so that's majorly it about the trapped entity instance dashboard. Um, so in order to go back, oh yeah, so we are going to look at, we've seen how we see the program stage uh, the program stage details or the event details of this trust entity instance, but you might want to access uh, you might want to access their trust entity attributes. Okay, the maybe their age or their date of birth or their phone number, any other information that was captured at the point of registration. So in order to do that, uh, we are going to at the bottom of our screen we were at the notes. We are going to go back to our clipboard. We are going to tap our clipboard. The first 
uh, button at the bottom of the screen. And then it will take us back to the where we had the program stages. And you see that we have a button with an I that says see details. Okay. We have a button with an I that says see details. So we can click on uh, that button that says see details. And you're able to see the enrollment and registration information of this particular trust entity instance. So the first thing you see is the registration date, the enrolling organization unit, and then the coordinates, okay? So Wesley demonstrated how we capture these coordinates on the web version. Within the Android app, when you want to capture coordinates, uh, where we have coordinates for the first one, you see that we have latitude and longitude. And then next to the longitude, we have a circle with a dot in the middle, okay? So that button enables us to capture the coordinates. So if I tap on that button, If I tap on that button, it is going to capture the coordinates of where I currently am um, or where this device currently is, okay? Important to note is that in order to do that, your GPS must be turned on on the Android device. Then we have our registration. These are two tabs, enrollment data and registration. We are going to tap on the registration tab. So this registration tab, uh, gives us access to the information that was captured at the point of registering this tract entity instance onto the program. So we can see that we have a local case ID, uh, first name, surname, date of birth for this particular program, okay? So what happens if our client, maybe previously the, the date of birth was captured and when uh, the next interaction with this client, we find out that the date of birth that was captured was wrong. We can always make edits to that, okay? In order to make edits, uh, you just tap on the field that you need to edit, okay? So maybe I tap on date of birth, it's going to bring me a calendar. Maybe this particular drug entity instance, we captured 1963. Maybe this uh, Brianna says, please, I am not that old. I need to, uh, I was born in 1970, not in 1963. So we can always scroll to the year that they were born and the date, and then we accept. We've made the change to the date of birth. We can also input any other field that might have been left out. Maybe the phone number was left out or the first name of the parent. All this information can be captured. And then at the bottom right-hand corner, we can see an icon of a disk, okay? At the bottom right corner, we can see an icon, a blue icon of a disk. So we tap on that icon and it is going to save whatever changes have been made to this particular track entity instance's registration information, okay? I do hope that we are together up to that point. Um, then uh, we have different events under our program stages, okay? Uh, yesterday we were told the difference between a program stage and an event, okay? So a program stage is something that is expected to occur. And then an event is that particular occurrence, okay? So we capture the date that it occurred and the information of what occurred on that particular date, okay? For example, clinical examination. Uh, anyone can have a clinical examination, but they're not going to have it on the same date. And most probably that it's not going to be the same information that is captured, okay? So, uh, we can see that we have our stage one, which is clinical examination. When you tap on your stage one, uh, it brings you the date of the event. Uh, this particular client has an event already entered. So it will bring you the date that the clinical examination happened and the organization unit where it happened. So when you tap on that, that date and the organization unit, it's going to bring you a form that has further detail of that particular event. So we can see that this is broken down into different sections. We have the clinical signs and symptoms, whether this client first signs and symptoms, we have the pregnancy details, uh, underlying conditions, all that information, okay? So that is the information pertaining to that particular event. Uh, we also have a lab requests, all those, okay? So we are able to continuously update these uh, program stages with the information 
as we get more information. Um, yeah, so that's uh, majorly it. Uh, we're going to go back and see how we can register a new case, okay? A tracked entity instance that is not already uh, registered in the program. This uh, tracked entity instance we're looking at was already registered in the program. We're now going to look at how to register a new one, okay? So whenever we are at a particular page in the Android app and we need to go a step back, on the top, top left hand corner, we have an, an arrow pointing to the left. So we can always make use of that arrow. It will take us back. Okay. So uh, in a scenario that maybe we searched for Brianna, but then the Brianna that we found is not the Brianna that we're interested in entering into the system. We can always, uh, at the bottom right, you see that we have a magnifying glass with a plus next to it, okay? This allows us to add a new case or a new trapped entity instance into the program, okay? So um, if I click on that plus, uh, it's going to take me back to the search and then it will bring me a big plus sign, okay? a big plus sign, which allows us to enter a new case. So we click on that big plus sign. And then the first thing we have to enter is the enrollment organization unit. For, for every trapped entity instance that is registered in a program, there must be an organization unit that has enrolled them onto that program, okay? So maybe this is a CHW Mahosot. So I will tap CHW Mahosot and I accept, okay? Then it will go ahead to prompt me to enter the date that this particular case was registered, okay? So I'm going to look for the date. Maybe this case was registered in June. I am going to scroll all the way to June by making use of those arrows that are next to the month. And then I tap the 10 and I accept, okay? So it has brought me to a page that has the enrollment data and the, the registration data. So I can go ahead to enter this data about this case. Um, the, the registration date is already populated. The organization unit is populated, but then I can go ahead and capture the coordinates by, remember what we said, that circle with the dots in the middle, tap that circle, I'll be able to capture the coordinates for this particular track entity instance. Then I go on to registration to enter the registration information about this particular case. So maybe this case, yes, she's called Bri uh, Brianna. Please let's make sure that as we register, we are all registering different track entity instances, okay? So I am going to register uh, Brianna, maybe she's called Brianna Matthews, okay? Brianna Matthews. I enter her date of birth. She was born in 1980. So to help me rush to the year of birth, I'm going to click on the year and scroll down to 1980. Okay. And then enter the date that she was born. Maybe she was born on October the September the 18th. So I will accept. Her age is auto-populated. Okay. So there are times within programs that you'll find some of the attributes or some of the data elements are auto-populated. This is to ensure uh, data quality. If, for example, the age is dependent on the date of birth, uh, we, we configure program rules to ensure that once the date of birth is entered, we can auto-calculate the age of the tracked entity instance. A country of residence, we'll capture the country of residence. Maybe it's Uganda. So when you tap country of residence, it brings you a list of different countries, but you are, you are still able to search for a particular country in case you do not want to go through the entire list. Since some countries are at the bottom of the list always when it's alphabetical order, countries like Uganda, Tanzania, we're always at the bottom. So you, you're free to type in and search for the country of residence. Then uh, the home address, the mobile phone number, the first name of the parent, surname. So you enter all the necessary information 
pertaining to the structure entity instance. Okay. So after all that has been entered, at the bottom right, we still have that blue button that has a disk. So you tap on that blue button with a disk and it's going to save the track entity instance. I hope we are together up to that point. I hope we are together up to that point. Uh, we are all clear on how to register a new TEI within the Android app, okay? So after saving the registration information, it then directly takes us to stage one, which is the clinical examination and diagnosis, okay? So we have to have the date of consultation. We have to have the date of consultation, which we can enter. Uh, it could be the same as the registration date in some, inst some uh, instances. So it also depends on the configuration of your program. You could set it to automatically pick the, the registration date as the date of consultation or as the date of the very first event that this uh, track entity instance has within a program, okay? Then you can also capture the coordinates of where this particular event happened. So we are able to capture coordinates both at the point of enrollment and also at the point of entering an event. So I will capture the coordinates and then I update. Okay, so when this is done, it takes us to uh, where we can enter the more data pertaining to this particular event. So we can enter the signs and symptoms. Uh, did this particular case have signs and symptoms? Yes. Uh, date of symptoms onset, uh, maybe this happened uh, in May, on May 5th, okay? Then did the, does, the, does the client have a fever? Yes. If so, what is their temperature? Maybe their temperature was 38. Does the client have a cough? Yes. Does the client have shortness of breath? Yes. Okay. And you go on and enter pregnancy details, whether this client is pregnant or not. If the client is pregnant, then we get to enter more information about the pregnancy. If the client is not, we move on to the next section. Uh, any underlying conditions, maybe yes. And this client has diabetes, maybe. Okay. Uh, hospitalization. Uh, is the client hospitalized, uh, exposure risk? So we enter all this information pertaining to that particular event, okay? So after this information has been entered, still at the bottom right-hand corner, we have a blue button with a disk that enables us to save the particular event, okay? So when you tap that blue button, it has, gives us two options, okay? So we have either finish and complete or finish, okay? So finish and complete is used in a scenario where you have entered all the necessary uh, information for this particular event and uh, uh, you're, you're sure that that record is complete. So we can use finish and complete, okay? Finish is used in situations where you have entered some data and you're going to come back and have to enter more data pertaining to this particular event. So you can use finish so that you remember to come back and finish and, and enter the data and then finish and complete, okay? So for this one, we're going to use finish and complete. We tap finish and complete. So we can see that now on our track entity instance dashboard, it is now showing us that stage one clinical examination has one event entered, okay? Then we can move on to the next stage. Okay. So the next stage is lab request. Uh, yesterday, when we were looking at the tracker data model, we saw that we can either have a program stage that is repeatable or a program stage that is non-repeatable. Okay. What does that mean? There are certain things that happen only once, okay? maybe in a particular case, for the case of uh, COVID case test surveillance. Okay? You will have clin clinical examination happening only once. Okay, and yet a case can have multiple lab requests, have multiple lab results, 
and have multiple health outcomes, okay? So that's why you see that uh, stage one is non-repeatable, while uh, the rest of the stages are repeatable, okay? So we have to take note of this, especially when we are configuring our programs, okay? So, um, <clears throat> so we're going to look at stage two, which is the lab request stage. Uh, we, we tap on stage two lab request, okay? Since there's no event existing, we have to make use of the plus next to the word lab request, okay? We have to make use of the plus next to the word lab request. So in order to do that, you just tap on the plus, and then uh, you will see that there are two options, either add new or referral, okay? So maybe if this client, uh, this lab request is going to be done from a different facility, you can do a referral or you can add new if it's going to be done within the same organization unit. So we tap add new, it allows us to enter a new lab request, okay? So we have the date of the lab request, possibly it's the same date as the clinical examination, which was in June. Okay, and then we go next. Okay, then we go ahead and enter the reason for testing for COVID. Uh, maybe this, uh, we said this client had uh, symptoms, so maybe this case came in seeking healthcare due to suspicion of COVID. Then we go ahead to enter the specimen details. So all these are called sections within the program stage. So we go ahead to enter specimen details. Uh, maybe it is a nozzle wash. Sorry, a nozzle swab, and then the date the specimen was collected. That was June the eighth, and the date it was sent to the laboratory. Maybe it was sent on the same date. Okay, and then the test request, where we are entering the type of test. Okay, so maybe this was taken for a PCR test. So we are going to enter PCR. And then at the bottom right hand corner, we have our blue button with a disk that allows us to save. So we can go ahead and save. So it's warning us to ensure that the date we have entered is correct. Okay. So there we have it. Okay. But remember, we said that it is possible. Remember that we said it's possible to have uh, more than one lab request entered. So the program stage of lab requests, it is possible to have more than one event happening, okay? So if we needed to enter another event, we would still tap on our stage two lab request, then we'll be able to see our plus sign again next to the word lab request. So we tap on the plus sign and then we add new, and then we go ahead and enter the details of this other event, okay? So maybe this lab request uh, was ordered same reason, um, the specimen, maybe this time they took uh, urine, okay? The date, we enter the date the, the sample was taken, the date the sample was sent to the laboratory, okay? And then the details, the type of test that was requested, okay? And then in the bottom right-hand corner, we use our blue button to save the event, okay? So we can see that under stage one, we have one event and under stage two, we have two events, okay? So we can go ahead and enter events under the remaining program stages. So after this case has been followed, maybe the clinical examination has been done, the lab requests were sent out, the lab results were received, and then we have a health outcome. So after all this has been captured, maybe this case is even fine now, they're no longer uh, positive for COVID, we can complete their enrollment, okay? We can go ahead and complete their enrollment. So in order to do that, in the top right-hand corner, we have a three-dot menu, okay? We have a three-dot menu in the top right-hand corner where we have three dots appearing. So we tap on that three dot menu, okay? And on that menu, you will see an option of 
complete. Okay. We'll see an option of complete. So we tap complete and it will complete that particular enrollment. Okay. So when you complete, you can see that uh, next to the name Brianna Matthews on the right, you can see that that padlock has now changed to completed. Okay. That padlock has now changed to completed. Let me just reopen to show you what it looked like before. So you can see before it is a green padlock that is open. And then when we complete by going to the three dot menu and then clicking on complete, it is now a closed padlock showing that that enrollment is completed. Okay. So do we have any questions at that point before we move on? Do we have any questions at that point? Yes, uh, I have a question. I put it also on Slack. Uh, it's about the, is it possible, for example, uh, some information from the lab request uh, to be reused in the lab result stage. For example, the detail of the source of the samples, the type of the test, uh, and so that the lab technician on the lab result doesn't have to retype the, the request again to avoid uh, uh, error in encoding. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your question. Um, I will request some of my fellow uh, facilitators to answer that question. Uh, hello. Yes, Emma. Um, uh, thank you very much, Daisy. Uh, thank you, uh, I hope it's Vini, uh, for your question. So we could use uh, program rules to try and pre-fill some of these items uh, so, so that they come in already filled in and you don't have to repeat this work. Uh, but um, uh, for example, if we are again talking about the, the lab example, I know from the field, uh, the, the the, the lab person in the field could specify a certain test that they require. However, when the sample gets to the testing area, they might not have, uh, what are they called? They might not have the necessary requirements to perform that particular test and they might use uh, other alternatives. So you might want to keep that, uh, to keep that into consideration. So using program rules, you can fulfill uh, some of the fields but in case where the other person has to make the decision, then you might want to uh, give them the opportunity to make that decision over. Thank you, Emma. A question, can we share the data elements, the same data elements between the two stages or is not allowed? Uh, so we do share the data elements and that's why you're able to use the program rules to pre-fill uh, uh, existing, um, to pre-fill uh, the, the, the existing uh, values. Uh, the way the configuration is, when you at, assign a data element to a program stage, it sort of gets, uh, it is appended with that program stage. So it is unique for that program stage. So I will have type of test in uh, lab results, and I can also have type of test in, uh, in the lab request. Uh, however, on output, they will, if there are different responses, there will always be a uh, different uh, for the two stages. So you don't have to request to, to create the lab test multiple times. Uh, you can just use, uh, sorry, the, the let's say type of test or type of result. Uh, you don't have to create them over and over again. You can always reuse them. Uh, in the back end, it will always append the program name or the program stage to that data element in order to identify where those values should be stored at any point in time. 
Over. Thank you, over. Thank you, Emma. Um, in the interest of time, we are going to move on and then we'll take more questions at the end of the session. Um, so we have looked at how we can update the events for this particular track safety incident. Uh, the next thing we're going to see is how we can add the relationship, okay? For example, if this uh, client has had contacts, okay? This case has had contacts we can go ahead and capture, uh, relate them to the contacts that they have had, okay? Remember we said uh, on the track sensitive instance dashboard, at the bottom of the screen, we have those four buttons. We have the clipboard button that shows us, that is the default, it shows us the program stages, the events that are existing and the details, uh, the registration details of this particular track entity instance. Then we have the bar that shows us the program indicators. And then the third button that is able to allow us to enter relationships, okay? So when we go to that third button, you see that there are currently no relationships. Click the plus to add a new one. So we are able to click this blue plus button at the bottom right to add a new relationship. So in this case, we are adding uh, the people that uh, Brianna, Brianna Matthews has been in contact with. So we are going to click, uh, we're going to click, uh, we click the add and then we click has been in contact with. It will bring us a list of different tracked entity instances, okay? So currently it's showing us all the tracked entity instances across the different programs that this user account has access to but we might want to only view the track entity instances within a particular program. At the, top, uh, of the, at the top of the screen, we have a blue bar that has all persons. So when you click on that drop down, you're able to select a different program, okay? So in this case, since we are registering the contacts, we are going to go to COVID-19 contact registration and follow up. So it shows us the different people and then you can uh, tap the person that this uh, case has been in contact with. So we tap that person. And then now we have, you see that now within Brianna Matthews uh, relationship page, we can see that she has been in contact with Michelle. Okay, I hope that is clear. So that is how we are able to enter uh, relationships between track entity instances. Um, Yeah, there are also times when the, the track entity instance that this person has been in contact with, or this that you want to, the track entity instance that you want to relate this TAI to is not existing in the program, okay? Or is not existing at all in the system. So you can always still under, we're still under the relationships page. You can always use the blue plus, okay? Select has been in contact with, and then you, at the top right-hand corner, you can see your search uh, button. You do the search. Sorry, we first select the program, then we do the search. And uh, if this person is not existing, click on that search again. Sorry, I did not enter the attributes to search. Maybe this, uh, this person is called uh, Shivan. So we do a search. If there's no Shivan existing, it is going to let us know that the search criteria did not return any results, okay? So we can always make use of the plus at the bottom of the screen. And then we now go ahead and enroll this contact, okay? We are now going ahead to enroll this contact. Maybe it's the same uh, facility we accept. Enter the date we are enrolling, okay? And then enter the registration information of this contact that we are entering the relationship with Brianna with, okay? So we enter the age, maybe she's 22. She's also in Uganda. So we enter the country of residence, Uganda. We enter the date of birth. She was born in, uh, she's 22, she was born in 2000. 
1998, okay, enter the date of birth. Um, you enter all the information pertaining to this fact and to instance. And then at the bottom right hand corner, we have the uh, save button. Then you're going to enter the relationship with the case. Maybe this is a sibling, the exposure assessment, uh, as contact exposed, yes, the date of the, of the exposure and all that information. And then you go ahead and save. So you can go ahead and finish and complete, okay? So we now have, uh, so if we go back, to Brianna's uh, relationship page, we can see that she has two contacts. She has Michelle and then she has Shivan and they are both uh, entered and they are linked to her, okay? I hope that is clear. So we have all our data entered. Uh, the next thing we need to see, remember we said that with the Android app, we're able to enter data even offline, okay? With the Android app, we are, we are able to enter data offline. The need for internet connectivity is at the point of logging into the app, at the point of pulling data from the uh, instance, the point of pulling data from the instance down to the Android device, and then at the point of pushing data from the Android device to the DHIS2 instance, okay? So we have entered these two records, Brianna, okay? We need to have them pushed. Currently, they are only available on our Android device, okay? If you go into the system and go to tracker capture, you will see that you can currently, you're not able to see them, okay? Because they are only stored on my Android device currently. Even you on your Android device right now, you cannot see the clients that I have registered or made edits to. That is important to note because there are times that uh, we might be looking for a client that someone entered and that client is only stored on their device and they're not yet synced to the DHIS2 instance, okay? So what shows us that this client is already synced and all oh, this client is not yet synced? Next to my two clients that have the name Brianna, you can see that there are two gray arrows that are pointing towards each other, okay? So that shows us that this client is uh, currently stored on the device but is not, uh, is not available on the other end. All the changes that I have made to this client are currently stored on my device and they're not available on the other end, okay? So there are three ways to do a sync. You might want to sync just one particular trapped entity instance, okay? You might want to sync just one particular trapped entity instance. In order to do that, um, you find that trapped entity instance, maybe our Brianna Matthews that we entered, you tap those uh, two gray arrows pointing towards each other. You see that it will let you know that this data is stored in your device only. It is not synced with the server. So you go ahead and you tap send and it will synchronize, okay? So you can see starting synchronization, syncing and then synchronizing complete. So that data has been pushed, okay? Are we together? The next way, there are times you might have made so many edits to so many different tracked entity instances, or you have entered so many new tracked entity instances, and it becomes tedious to have to tap one by one and do the sync, okay? So the other way that we can do that, we use our the arrow on the top left hand of the screen. You use that arrow, it will show you the different programs, okay? So when you look at the programs, you will see that some of them have two arrows pointing toward each other, okay? They have two arrows pointing toward each other. So in order to, um, to do a sync of all that the edits or all the new tracked instances in that particular program, you can tap uh, those two arrows and then tap send. So it's going to do a, a sync of everything that is on that program. It is going to push it to the DHIS2 instance or push it to your database. And then after that, you will see that it has shown synchronization is completed. And now it's no longer showing those two gray arrows, okay? That is the second way that we can do it. But what if you have multiple programs and all of them have had changes made? 
You can also, at the top left-hand corner, you see that we have three lines. You tap on those three lines. It will lead you to a, a, a menu that has our settings option. So you can go to settings. Uh, when you get to settings, you have uh, settings for sync data, okay? You have settings for sync data. So you tap sync data, and then at the bottom, you have sync data now, okay? So when you tap that sync data now, it is going to sync all the data that is currently stored on the device. It is going to push it. And it is also going to pull all the changes that have been made. Sorry, all the, the new track entity entity tracked entity instances or the new events that have been uh, entered from the web version or by other people using the Android app, it's going to pull all of them to your Android device, okay? You can also choose how often you want to do this sync, okay? You can choose if you want the sync to be done on a daily basis, which is the default, okay? Or you can choose if you want it to be done every hour or every 30 minutes or six hours, 12 hours, depending. There are also, uh, I know that there are some instances where manual is chosen, whereby one wants to go in and choose when to sync, okay? So you can change your sync settings accordingly. We also have sync, an option of sync configuration. This is where you want to pull all the metadata changes. Maybe some changes have been made to some data elements or to some program rules or to some uh, something in the program. So you can always use sync configuration in order to pull those changes, okay? And then we have the sync parameters. These sync parameters allow us to choose which, uh, they allow us to choose how many records we want to have pulled into our device, okay? So you can see that currently uh, we have events to download as 1,000, TEIs to download as 500, okay? So you can choose how many events you want to be downloaded into your device and how many tracked entity instances you want to be downloaded into your device, okay? Uh, there is uh, the first drop down that says settings limited. We have different options, okay? We have globally, whereby you want to use the settings that were set by your systems administrator for that instance, okay? So you want to use those settings. Then we have by organization unit, whereby you want to select how many events should be downloaded per organization unit, or how many tracked entity instances should be downloaded per organization unit onto your device, okay? We have by program, whereby you want to select how many tracked entity instances should be downloaded, or how many events should be downloaded to your device per program. And then by organization unit and program, here you want to, specify the number per organization unit and program. Maybe you want to say that for uh, the COVID-19 case-based surveillance program, I wanted to download 300 events and uh, 50 tracked entity instances per organization unit per program, okay? And then we have uh, reserved values. Uh, there are instances where maybe uh, some values are uh, reserved, maybe some IDs are auto-generated and reserved. You can also choose how many you want to download into your Android device, such that when you're offline, you're able to, um, to continue to use those reserved values, okay? However, important to note is that, for example, if I say I want to have 10 reserved values downloaded into my device, if I register, maybe there are unique identifiers, if I register, 10 uh, tracked entity instances, that would be fine. When I get to the 11th one, it is not going to have any more reserved values for me to use, okay? So we have to use reserved values depending on how many, <clears throat> how many uh, tracked entity instances or how many events we hope to be able to enter in a particular, while we are offline, okay? Then we have the sync error log, whereby we can see the, the errors that we face uh, during Okay, so sometimes you'll find that you face an error when you're trying to sync the data. So those errors, uh, in order to understand where they're coming from and know what you need to change, you open your sync error log, okay? Sometimes it can be like, maybe there's a particular attribute that is supposed to be unique and you have entered it on your local device 
and it's uh it's it's unique on your local device yes but there's already a tracked t instance that has that value within uh within the entire your part your your entire instance so <clears throat> you'll find that you face an error sorry you face an error in syncing and this error log lets you know where exactly the issue is so you can go back and make an edit and then try to sync again then we have delete local data this one deletes all the data that you have stored within this app on your device okay all the data that you have stored for this app on your device okay please don't think that it is going to sync it's going to delete all your data on your device no 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 just the data that is uh, pertaining to this dhis2 app on your device that is what it will be it will delete so important to note is that we have to make sure that before we do this delete everything that we want to be synced has already been synced successfully so that we do not lose out on any data okay and we have the reset app data and configuration this one uh resets the configuration and the app data on your device as well. So I think that's mostly it from what we had on the Android Capture app. Uh, we have five minutes to ask questions. Please go ahead and ask your questions. I see someone is, uh, uh, John is asking if uh, the Android software if it's open source if the code is available on github Hello, uh, I have a question. Uh, sorry. No, I was just answering John's question. So the, the app the app itself is uh, open source. It's free. It's available on Google Play Store. Anyone who needs to, to use it is able to download it. About uh, the, the code being open source, we, we shall be able to get back to you on that on the Slack channel. Yes, please go ahead with your question. No. Yeah, it's uh, my question is when we first uh, syncing or or when we want to sync the data or the configuration uh, into the Android app, is it possible to choose, for example, I just want to sync uh, a stage for uh, the clinical and not for the lab? Over. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, currently, it's not possible to choose which particular data you want to sync. However, like I said, you're able to choose how many events or how many track sensitive instance you are you would like to download. But it's uh, currently it's not. There's no option of selecting that I want just this program stage or I want just this uh, track sensitive instance to be to be um, downloaded to my Android device. I hope your question has been answered. Yes, thank you. All right. Uh, someone is asking for a recap on how to add a new client. Uh, yeah, so when we are adding a new client, the first thing we, we need to do, we first of all select the program that this client is being added to, and then we have to do a search, okay? We have to do a search to find, uh, to find out whether this uh, tracked entity instance is already existing within the within the device within the database. Okay, so in order to do that, uh, at the top of the screen, you see that we have a, a search icon or a small magnifying glass with a plus next to it. Okay, so when you tap it, it allows you to search for the track entity instance. Maybe this time I want to search for someone that is called. Uh, Maybe I want to search for Mary, okay? So I will type Mary as the first name 
And then at the bottom, the bottom right hand corner, you see that there is a bigger button that has the search icon with a plus. So you click on that. And then it will let you know if uh, it will bring for you all the Marys that are currently existing within uh, within the data, okay? So it will show you all the Marys. And then if it's, if it's not the Mary that you're interested in, or if uh, it actually lets you know that this, uh, you, it did not return anything for the search criteria, you use the, at the bottom right, there is a white button with a plus. So you use that button and then begin the enrollment process by entering the enrolling organization units. You select it, you accept. Then if you enter the date of registration, you accept, and then it brings you the form where you can enter registration information. So that is uh, the registration process. I hope the question for Raphael is answered. Any more questions? Someone is saying which DHIS2 Android capture version are you using that allows you to take screenshots? Um, for training purposes, there's a DHIS2 training uh, app that is available in the Google Play Store. That is what we use for training purposes so we can take screenshots, so we can be able to share screen. Uh, yeah, for the purpose of confidentiality of data, the, the DHIS2 capture app doesn't allow us to take the screenshots, and that is in order to keep data confidential. Okay. So if there are, if there are no further questions, uh, I will hand over. Hello. To I have yes. one question. Yes. Uh, if you select the uh, the program and you go to one of the uh, entity, some of them they have like a syringe and other have like uh, people with uh, message on their uh, head icon. I don't, I don't know what does this uh, express on, on that entity. Sorry, kindly you repeat your question? Yeah, in some like, uh, when you go on some of the program, you mm. can find the, the icon on top of the date. Mm. Yeah, so I don't, uh, in my part, like I, I select COVID-19 contact registration. I found some of the, of the entity have the icon of syringe and some have the icon like that one. You, you, you have just, uh, when you come, <laughs> you go back. Yeah, the, the ALB, the B, the, all right, if I could respond. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so those are icons that you associate with the, the program. So when you're configuring, let's say, a tracker program, uh, what you can do is maybe to give an indication to the people that will use the program as to what that program is about. So when you're doing the configurations, there are icons that you can associate with the program. So then when you've done that, uh, that icon will always be associated with the program when it's being uh, shown in the in the app. Uh, okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, because we are running out of time, we are going to request that uh, any other questions are shared on Slack, and we'll be able to get back to you with answers. Uh, we have uh, brief exercises on both sessions that we have had today on both the, the web capture session as well as the Android capture session. These, are, these exercises are available on uh, Moodle. When you log into Moodle, you will see that we have the tracker, tracker web, uh, tracker capture web and tracker capture Android. So you just click on either one of them. And then at the bottom, you will see that you have your assignment there. you'll find that you have your assignment there, okay? Currently, it may not be active for your account, but it's going to be activated as soon as this session ends. So please remember to do uh, both the assignments for the web capture as well as the Android capture. 
these will be graded and will have a contribution to the final the final mark at the end of the academy. So over to you, Hadija. Thank you, Daisy. So I've shared the word of the day on the chat box, but I also project it so that you can also see. So that's the uh, word of today. So please log in to Moodle, then under the attendance, go to day two and make sure that you submit that as a uh, word of the day. I have issues with my screen being visible. So Daisy will share her screen so that you can see the word of today. But it's also in the chat box. So you should be able to access it in the chat box as well. So it's now visible. That's uh, today's uh, word to be marked under the agenda. But also we would like to hear your feedbacks based on uh, yesterday's session as well as today's session. So please log in into Moodle. Uh, and we also have uh, a section for feedback. Kindly provide your feedback for yesterday and today. And we'll be looking forward to receive those feedbacks so that we can see what can be improved in the coming sessions. And before we end the session, I've shared a link to the upcoming Analytic Tools Academy once again in the chat box. So in case you'd be interested, kindly register yourself. The Academy will be from 6th to 17th of December. It's gonna be a visual academy, just like this one. So if at all you're interested, kindly register yourself. <laughs> 